Hello again, this is Ivana from The Weight of Nature and today I'm going to show you proper wet specimen care. Okay, so the first thing we're going to cover is what type of liquid you should use and when you should change the liquid in your wet specimen. So this is a freshly changed specimen. Notice how it's nice and clear. I've had this specimen uh, for about a year. I'm using any kind of preservation method, you're going to lose color. Blood comes out, it's not full of life anymore, so it's going to lose all of that. So that's completely normal for it to look kind of void of color. This specimen is a newer one that I just started about a month ago. You can see the water, or the liquid is yellow and it kind of turns orangey red as it gets to the bottom. Got some floating things in there. That is all of the blood leaving it. Any secretions, the color, it's all coming out into the liquid. This is something you have to change. You don't want it to stay this nasty. That look, those secretions have to go somewhere and you don't want your specimen to get ruined if you just leave it there. So if you're working on a new specimen, or you bought one that's yellowing, turns this color, change it. And no matter if your specimen was done with formalin or with isopropyl alcohol, the final storage method is always 70% isopropyl alcohol. That is the general consensus of everything I've read is when your specimen is done, it goes in this, and this is what you change out whenever it needs changed. Okay, so next is what kind of jar should you be putting your specimen in? I see so many people use metal caps. And what I mean by metal cap is something like this. Any sort of jar with a metal lid. This is going to rust. I see tons and tons of specimens being sold in the canning jars. I'm sure you guys have all seen them. They're gonna go by the name of ball. They've got the screw on band, completely metal top. Tons of people are selling their wet specimens in these and you should not be storing them in metal caps. Why? Rust. Like I said before, it's just going to rust and whoever buys it from you is going to have to change it and they're going to have to spend 10 to $20 on another big jar. Now there are many other options you can use. One is jars from old candles. They have a plastic or rubber seal. Uh, it's not, it doesn't get eaten by the alcohol. You have a glass jar creates a nice seal, it doesn't let it evaporate. That's what you want. You want something that's not going to let it evaporate. You can also use spice jars. You can clean them out. Um, I bought a whole case of these at Big Lots for 95 cents a piece. Normally they have a little shaker in them, but I pop that out. And the lid's made of plastic, glass jar. You want something with a screw-on cap that you can really screw on tight, that way when you tip it over, it's not going to leak out and again, it's going to help with evaporation. Another jar you can use, these are kind of an older jar, they have the locking mechanism and hinge. I've noticed that these ones, the rubber doesn't really stand up to the alcohol that well. It kind of, if you mess with it too much, it'll melt. But if you just kind of leave it where it is and try, don't put the alcohol up to the rubber line, it works out pretty well. Now at Walmart, you can get a more modern version of this where the rubber does not melt. And I kind of like these jars better. They're very slim line. And it's got an easier locking mechanism, pops open. You can find these in the baking section. I 
I also have these little jars. And this one's going to need change. It's turning a little yellow. But this is a little shrimp. And as you can see, this, this is a little screw cap glass. These things do not evaporate. They do not spill. They're amazing. The person on Etsy who was selling these is no longer in business, so I'm having a hard time finding these again. Or you can also use cork. I don't really like cork. Um, as you can see, I coated the top in a paraffin wax to keep it from evaporating because if not, it'll just keep going out of the cork and you'll have to keep refilling it. As you can see, it's kind of low, so I'm going to have to stick a needle down in there and refill it again because the corks don't come out. But this is something you kind of want to stay away from. If you really need uh, something to put your specimen in, go for it, but change it later because it's just going to keep evaporating and... Alright, so let's say you bought a specimen and it kind of looks a little funky. By weird is it's got white spots, the fur is falling out, um, when you open it up it stinks. When you open up your jar it should smell like alcohol. It should not smell like rot. If your jar smells like a dead animal, your specimen was not preserved properly and it's rotten. Um, if the hair is falling out, it's rotten. Now let's say you have a hairless specimen. How do you tell if it's rotten? Well, I've had this specimen for quite a while. It's a little tiny mouse. So if your hairless specimen has gone bad, normally I see them completely covered in just white spots. It'll kind of look like a freezer burn. Um, the skin might start to slough off. It'll just kind of fall off. That's rotten. Uh, the belly will be completely black. That means the intestines have rotten. Well, if your specimen was formalin preserved um, and let's say your liquid goes down, should be fine. Formalin is a very good preservative, you know, it's used on corpses. I really, it shouldn't start to deteriorate very quickly when you catch it, put your specimen back up. Alcohol preserved specimens, if you let your specimen get too far down or completely empty, uh, as long as it has a liquid it should be okay, but if it gets completely empty your specimen will start to rot because alcohol doesn't stay inside of the specimen. If there is enough for all of your liquid to evaporate, that means it's going to start evaporating out of your animal and it's going to rot because now it has no preservative. All its preservative is gone and it's going to start rotting because now it's just a normal little animal full of water. Alright, and now we're just going to move on to general care. Uh, after your specimen has been changed, um, and a side note on that, it's normal for your specimen to yellow over time. Don't think that the person you bought it from did a bad job because your liquid's turning yellow. Changing your specimens just makes it more appealing. It's going to get all that gunk out of there, and if you're just now starting to preserve something, you want to kind of get all that blood and gunk out. That way your specimen can continue soaking up that stuff, getting rid of anything that could cause it to possibly rot, and just become a wet specimen. Um, candles, flames, cigarettes, keep them away from your wet specimens. That should just be extreme common sense. Alcohol is insanely flammable. If you light a candle and your alcohol is evaporating through your little cork lid, something might catch on fire. If you have a room full of wet specimens like I do, something might catch on fire. Maybe little trinkets or display items that you may put up and never think about again and maybe look at every once in a while, but they can be dangerous. 
uh, keep them away from your children and pets, obviously. Um, if they knock one down, dogs like to eat things. Children like to drink things. Children drink bleach and gasoline. I personally know someone who drink, drank gasoline. Just keep your stuff up high and away from your things because you don't want your child drinking straight up alcohol. They could die. Your pet could die from ingesting an alcohol or formalin soaked specimen. Keep your things put up and don't let things get into it that shouldn't be into it. There are so many options for locked cases, wall shelving, bookcases, put them on the top shelf. Just keep them out of the way. Keep them locked in a room if you have small children or a big dog. Put them in a room where that animal can't get to them. Just think about your options before you put things out on display. Alright, well I hope that video was informative. If it was, give it a thumbs up. Um, if you have any more questions, put them in the comments below. If there are more questions, I might make a follow-up video on... Yeah, if you have any more questions, drop them down there. And I hope you liked it. You guys have a nice day.